Shalom, 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 Israel. This is uh, Captain Paul Israel from Kingdom Builders of Israel LLC. And today's class topic is going to be on Father's Day is Pagan. Okay, today's class topic is going to be on Father's Day is Pagan. Okay, Israel, many of our people don't know uh, that Father's Day is Pagan. So we're going to go through this class lesson to explain the history on why we celebrate Father's Day as a quote-unquote national holiday. Uh, every year in America and also in some parts of the world Okay, so Historically they have uh, The start of Father's Day um, Came from this lady named Sonora Smart Dodd uh, Okay, if you look at this particular picture right here on the left You see a so-called white woman and also a so-called white man to the right um, Sonora, this is her father right here who she um commemorated as a memorial for her father so she wanted to make father's day a staple point in american society so when we go to uh the quote-unquote background of sonora um her name is sonora smart dodd um she was the daughter of an american civil war veteran william jackson smart and was responsible for the founding of father's day so you see this wikipedia acknowledged that sonora smart dodd was the founder of the more americanized father's day okay so it says early life sonora um louise smart was born in jenny lynn sebastian county arkansas to william jackson smart and his wife ellen victoria cheek smart it says william smart was a farmer who served as a sergeant on I mean, served as a sergeant in the United States Army, 1st Arkansas Light Artillery during the Civil War. In 1889, when Sonora was seven years old, the Smart family moved from Moran, Arkansas, to a farm west of Spokane, Washington, between Creston and Wilbur. When Sonora was 16, her mother died in childbirth with her sixth child. Sonora was the only daughter and shared with her father William in the raising of her younger brothers, including her infant brother Marshall Sonar Smart, Mary Bruce, I mean Mary John Bruce Dodd, one of the original founders of Ball and Dodd Funeral Home, and had a son, John Bruce Jack Dodd, born in 1909. Okay, let's get to the point. It says Father's Day. Though a Father's Day, though a Father's Day service was held on July 5th, 1908, in West Virginia to honor the fathers killed in the Monaga uh, mine disaster, it is Sonara Smart's Dodd who is credited as the founder of the official American national holiday. It says Smart held her father in great esteem while hearing a church sermon about the newly recognized Mother's Day at Central Methodist Episcopal Church. Sonara felt strongly that fatherhood needed recognition as well. She approached the Spokane Ministerial Alliance and suggested her own father's birthday of June 5th as the day of honor for fathers. The Alliance chose the third Sunday in June instead. So again, you had, of course, uh, Sonara Smart wanted her father's birthday to be the recognition of a father's day, you know, but again, uh, the, the Alliance organization chose the third Sunday of June to uh, be credited as Father's Day. Okay, the first Father's Day was celebrated June 19, 1910 in Spokane, Washington. Although observance of the holiday faded in the 1920s, over time the idea of Father's Day became popular and embraced across the nation. 
1916, President Woodrow Wilson, Woodrow Wilson, so-called white man, sent a telegraph to spoken praising Father's Day services. William Genesis Bryan was another early admirer of the observance. In 1966, President Lyndon Johnson, another so-called white man, uh, signed a presidential proclamation declaring the third Sunday of June as Father's Day. And it says in 1972, President Nixon established a permanent nationalization or national observance of Father's Day to be held on the third Sunday of June each year. So President Nixon was the one that pushed Father's Day to be recognized on the third Sunday throughout each year. OK, he made it a permanent national observance. It says Dodd, who was Sonara, who we brought out, who was the founder of Father's Day, was honored at Expo in 1974, the World's Fair in Spokane in 1974. She died four years later at the age of 96 and was buried in Greenwood Memorial Terrace in Spokane. OK, Israel, the reason I brought out this information is because Father's Day is not the Israelites holiday okay the most high y'all never gave us father's day to observe okay that's something that we was taught by slave owners as you can see sonora smart dog she's a so-called white woman who wanted to push this father's day in memory of her father not in the memory of the black slaves or the uh, spanish slaves or the native indian slaves they had nothing to do with us <laughs> as you can see so we as a children of Israel, we always somewhat try to cater towards our slave owners' traditions and try to basically adapt that to be our custom, our heritage. But it's not, okay? This is the Edomites' heritage, okay, that that was for their people, okay? And uh, also, you look at the date Sonora Smart Dog was born. She was born in the late 1800s, like 1882, and her father was born i believe around it says 1842 so in 1842 when the founder of the father's day was founded or the, the 1842 who father's day was founded because of this particular guy named william jackson smart who was born in 1842 where was the blacks at in this situation 1842 we was in slavery israel because um we got so-called abolished out of slavery in hard conditions in 1876. So again, this particular man had somewhere possibly an agreement with the slavery conditions. So we are actually celebrating our slave owners, what? Father's Day. That's how, that has nothing to do with us, okay? Because she's doing it in memory of her father, okay? It's not in memory of the slaves. It has nothing to do with us. So when we go to the Bible, Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, the Most High says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So when we put another nation above us and we corroborate a day that's really catered towards another nation's gods or another nation's situation, we forsake our one true God from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because there's only one true God. So that's why the Most High put it in his law, thou shalt have no other gods before me, when you read Exodus 20, uh, verse 3. And also, Exodus chapter 20, verse 12 says, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days, that's days, that's plural, that's more than one day. So that's not one day out of a year. So Father's Day is pagan and it's not biblical. As we can see, it's not biblical. The most I never say just honor your father and mother on one day. It says days. That's plural. More than one day. It says that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee. So again, Israel, we have to obey the most high Yah. He said we're supposed to honor our father and mother throughout all our days that we live. Not necessarily one day out the year. But we're going to get the understanding of the pagan origins of Father's Day because that's on the surface what we just read uh, in American history. But Father's Day goes deeper than what we just read uh, on American history situation. Okay, it goes back to paganism. Okay, this particular article, 
okay it says digging into the history of father's day okay and this uh article was uh i guess published by evelyn uh fonseca i believe she's a, a sister from israel but of course i'm not sure if she's all the way in the truth or not but she did her research on the origin of um father's day okay this is a so-called hispanic sister okay um it says let me go down because many of our people associate uh these pagan days as something that is supposed to be observed okay it says how did father's day come about it says fathers have been celebrated long before let me scroll up so like you I went too far down it says how did father's day come about it says fathers fathers have been celebrated long before christ was even born and no i'm not referring to the earthly fathers you see father's day is closer closely related to pagan celebrations in honor of the sky fathers summer solstice and sun gods so she did her history and research and say hey father's day is associated to the gods of the skies or the summer solstice or the sun gods okay and then it says we'll get into those a bit okay let's go down let's go down it says during these pagan rituals so now she's giving the history of what goes down in these uh pagan rituals associated to father's day it says during these pagan rituals whenever goats were sacrificed they tied ribbons around the goats necks this was done to set them apart from the rest of the herd ever wonder where we got the tradition of gifting our father's ties on this holiday so that's why i say our people don't understand it's the the father's day notion is okay the fathers get the ties you know to go with their suits on father's day but in times past during pagan festivals associated with father's day in old times right they had different terms back then but they used to tie a tie around the goats before the goats were sacrificed to the idol gods okay let me just keep going down she's going to give this lady going to give the history of the sky gods or the sky fathers on here let me scroll down Hold on, go back up because we got to get to the history because like i said they paint this picture that we're good we're giving homage to our father earthly you know the father that birthed us but we're not it says sky father it says who or what is a sky father you may be asking good question i must admit i hadn't heard of this term until i did research on this holiday so i will start here according to ancient cultures sky fathers were or are referred to sky gods who were looked upon as fathers as i state this in plural because there are so many sky fathers in fact most cultures have one so she's acknowledging that in times past different cultures they had many different sky fathers with different deities different names okay different uh po different powers that these different gods of these other nations used to worship and now she's gonna uh break down the history a little bit of these different um sky gods okay i'm not gonna go all the way down what she mentioned but she's gonna give a, a somewhat scenario it says however sky father is translation of the vedic pantheon dies peter this is an indian god is the equivalent of the roman god jupiter and the greek god zeus and then she said i only she said i will only mention these gods for the sake of time and space but there are many sky fathers and i encourage you to do your own research so again she's acknowledging that it's a lot of different other gods okay uh that these other nations used to worship this is the sky god peter right here the indian uh god right here and you go down you have i believe this is uh jupiter god okay then you go down it says sky father a new said a mesopotamian god okay I'm keep scrolling down okay yeah so 
the summer solstice she says as i mentioned earlier father's day is closely related to the summer solstice pagan practices you will see what i mean in a minute it says the word solstice comes from the latin word solstinium which means sun stand still it is the longest day of the year and the shortest night in the northern hemisphere it is known by different names throughout the world in europe for example it is called midsummer uh, it says wiccans and the neo, neo pagans refer to it as litha and to the catholic church it is saint john's day so again the other nations uh take on these different names but they change the name but it's all meaning the same thing okay um i don't think i don't have to go no more with that because i think she's gonna go somewhere else okay let's go down it says uh it says all are one and the same and can trace their roots all the way back to ancient times pagans celebrated the summer solstice by sacrificing to the sky fathers okay sun gods and women perform pagan rituals it says the festivals lasted a whole week from june 19th all the way up to the 25th it says many of these traditions remain to this day so notice the time frame june 19th all the way to june 25th this is what they did the pagan rituals and they was giving uh sacrificing to sky fathers like the sun gods and so forth okay as you can see she has some pictures of midsummer uh summer solstice rituals going on this is somewhat of the pagan rituals that they do and this is like the saint john's day celebration rituals that they do primarily overseas of course um go down it says roman festivals it said festivals in honor of several gods took place during the summer solstice pagan celebrations one such example is the festival in honor of the goddess juno wife of jupiter juno was the goddess of women and childbirth the month of june was named in her honor so again the month of june is named after goddess juno see our people are still asleep they don't understand the months have relation of american months that we have on our calendar are related to greek and roman gods okay the month of june was named in her honor she was also the patroness of marriage and the reason why june remains the most popular month for weddings to this day so a lot of people get married in the month of june okay now understanding it goes back to uh celebration of what the goddess called juno uh okay this is just a brief history of that but let's go to the next one to prove that uh so-called white man knows father's day is the origin of paganism it says this is an article from the sun uh, this is like a uk article like uk news it says father's day 2020 what is the history and why do we celebrate it but this is why i'm bringing this out esau the so-called white man knows that uh it goes back to paganism okay it says what it said what's the history behind it so i'm like what's the history of father's day it says there are quite a few stories about the origins of father's day the earliest version comes from the ancient paganism as it happens to fall around the same day as the summer solstice which we brought out the history of the summer solstice and giving commemoration or uh celebration to the sky gods okay and then it says some pagan religions see the sun as the father of the universe so there's a potential link there okay um and then it said however father's day as we know it has been around for 110 years father's day actually comes from the united states and the story goes that it started from a memorial service from memorial service for the 250 fathers who died in the mononaga mining disaster that killed 361 men in west virginia in 1907 so we already explained the history of american tradition why american tradition keeps father's day generally but again esau the so-called white man knows the origin comes from primarily paganism okay that's why he said some pagan religions see the sun as the father of the universe and we just read the commandment by yahweh that says what thou shall have no other gods before me 
That's a commandment. Now, now I'll read another article from this church called threeheartschurch.org. Of course, it's not a Hebrew Israelite church, but of course, some Edomites do their history on pagan rituals or pagan um, understanding. So this particular church did an understanding where basically get a breakdown to as well about the pagan origin of uh, Father's Day. Okay, they acknowledge it's pagan. It says pagan. It says a person pagan. It's a definition. It says a person holding religious beliefs other than those of the main world religion. Okay, and then you scroll down. You see um it says pagans worship the sun so they they understand that paganism goes back to sun worshiping and then you got this picture right here it says father's day god it says Kalis, the pagan sky father god as you can see the image that it has right here i'm gonna scroll down it says during earlier times father's day was known by the name of the great sky father's day Okay, celebrating Father's Day gives honor to the pagan sky god, Kaelus. And it says Jupiter, Zeus, Uranus, and the summer solstice. So you're commemorating all different gods <laughs> on this particular day without you even knowing it, knowing it. Okay, in general. It says part of the week of the celebrations leading up to the summer solstice, the day was uh, give over to celebrating the provision of the sky father for his human children with his rich gifts of the sun and rain gifts of sacrificial goats and sheep recognizable by the festive ribbons bound about their necks so again uh this particular day in the pagan de deity situation they used to do what wrapped around uh the ribbons or something like a tie situation around a goat or a sheep for a sacrifice okay around their necks it says were supplemented with prayers for his continued guidance in the human journey towards spiritual adulthood so again you had the people that were doing these festivals praying to these sky gods in place for the of course the sacrificial goats and sheep towards a spiritual adulthood journey which is crazy because the children used to give the gifts to these goats okay so they can uh uh become good in adulthood basically that's why uh when fathers they come around you see it more catered towards the children giving respect and honor to their fathers on this particular day similar to right here they pray to the the sky gods to journey them to have a good adulthood it says during roman and grecian times animals ready to be sacrificed were recognized by the ties a ribbon that were placed around their necks on this day so that's why fathers are known to get the ribbon or tie a little tie bow tie whatever like that to wear with their suits they just replace the animals with the actual men who were fathers okay it says it out of high ready for sacrifice i don't know what that means <laughs> but this is an example of what they do on these days they tie a ribbon around the goat's neck for sacrifice let me scroll down it says see the goats right here waiting to be sacrificed this is what pagans do or pagan rituals do let's scroll down see now you see the father getting the tie and then it says does this guy have anything in common with those sacrifices okay you see this this is why the men on fathers they primarily get ties around their neck it says today it's dads who are being offered up as sacrifices to the great sky father god through gifts of the neck or through gifts of the necktie i thought that was an interesting correlation made to the early practice of this pagan day so the person that did this article is saying when they found out that the goats were the sacrifice or the goats or the sheep were the sacrifice to the idol gods now when you give your father the gift of a tile or certain gifts you're sacrificing your father to the idol gods which what we're going to bring out which were the idol gods which we brought up earlier was like jupiter uh uranus and stuff like that let me go down 
Here in America, we celebrate everything with food. So similar to sacrificing those uh, animals. Uh, and then it says people are continually getting together to celebrate. And this day is no different. So we come together, celebrate commemoration of the father. But in general, you pay sacrifices to who? The idol gods of the skies. Not necessary to your father. Okay, I don't have to go no more on that. But, okay, let me go back up. Okay, it says the God of Kellys. The sky God. Right here. Right here. It says Father's Day God, Kellys, the pagan sky father God. So we're going to go to Wikipedia to get this understanding. It says Kellys or Kolius. Uh, This is on Wikipedia. It said was a primal God of the sky in Roman myth and theology and uh, kind of grab and kind of graphic um and literature okay let me keep going okay the deity's name usually appears in masculine grammatical form conceived of as a male generated force but the new order from the kelum is also found as uh okay i'm gonna keep going down it's not really explaining it okay it says the identity the name Kalis indicates that he was the Roman counterpart of the Greek god Uranus. Okay. So you had a Greek god named Uranus and this Kalis was a Roman. Roman god. Uh, but similar to the Greek god Uranus. Uh, keep going. Okay. I don't have to read no more of that. Uh, okay, he said, who was of major importance uh, in theoretical genius of the Greeks? Da, da, da. It says, although Kellis is not known to have had a coat at Rome, not all scholars consider him a Greek import given a Latin name. He has been associated with Samarinus, the god of nocturnal thunder, as purely Roman. Kellis begins to appear regularly in Augustine art da, 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 and in connection with the cult Mithras during the imperial era. Okay, let me go down. It's not selling me nothing. Okay, right here. This is the point. According to Cicero and Hyginus, Kellis was the son of Ether and Dias, day or daylight. So Dias is a god of day and daylight. It said Dias was the personification of day Roman mythology and the counterpart of the Greek goddess Himera, the daughter of Nox. You see how many dang different gods these other nations have? Then they're saying uh, Ethere is one of the primitive deities in Greek. Ethere is the personification of the upper sky. He embodies the pure upper air that gods breathe as opposed to the normal air breathed by mortals. <laughs> So they're saying Ether and Dias had slept with each other and birthed um, Calculus. It said Calculus and Dias were in this tradition the parents of Mercury. This is madness. Mercury is a major god in Roman religion and mythology, being one of the one of the twelve conceities within the ancient Roman pantheon. He is the god of financial gain. Da 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 da. It said, with trivia, Calculus was the father of distinctly Roman god Janus. So that's why we have January. Because they're saying Calculus was the father of the Roman god Janus. As well as of Saturn and Ops. Calculus was also the father of one of the three forms of Jupiter. So which, which the young lady brought out earlier. Um, where's the young lady at? She brought out earlier. It goes back to Jupiter and Uranus and so forth. Let me go back up. Let me go back up. Cause she brought out a little history of this stuff, but she kind of somewhat um summarized it. Let me go back up. Like see, sky fathers. And this is what the history that I'm bringing out of the other sky fathers' uh, origin. How it relates. Okay. I'll go back. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so you see, Father's Day is closely related to pagan celebration in honor of the Sky Father, Summer Solstice, and Sun Gods. 
And this is the history that we're bringing out that all these um, father gods, you know, have relation to Father's Day. So it said Callus was also the father of one of the three forms of Jupiter. See, as you can see, Jupiter was a god that was in the sky. Jupiter, also known as Jove, is the god of the sky and thunder and king of the gods in ancient Roman religion and mythology. Jupiter was the chief deity of the Roman state religion throughout the Republican and Imperial eras. It said until Christianity became the dominant religion of, okay. And then it says the other two fathers being Aether and Saturn in one tradition. It says Catalyst was the father with Chilius and Musas. Though this was probably a mere translation of Quirinos from a Greek source. Okay. So all in all, these deities, different deities have something dealing with the sky or the sun. So scholars know that Father's Day goes all the way back to paganism, which I brought out the little history. That's why I brought out facts that go back to it. Okay. Um, now we're going to go to the book of Acts to prove that this is what Apostle Paul and the other disciples was beefing with the disciples about okay with the disciples of let's say living in greece or a greek city in turkey whatever okay um this is the book of acts chapter 19 verse 1 it says and it came to pass that while apollos was at corinth paul having passed through the upper coast came to ephesus and finding certain disciples so again it was certain disciples that was in Greece. Okay. And also it was certain disciples in Ephesus. Ephesus is in Turkey. Okay. It's proved that. Okay. Turkey. Okay. Ephesus. Uh, it says Ephesus. The most important Greek city in Ionian Asia Minor. The ruins of which lie near the modern village of Silicuk in western Turkey. Okay. So let me go back. So this is where Paul was at. Okay, so you had disciples in a Greek city in Turkey. Okay, that's where Ephesus is at. And Corinth is located where? Located in Greece. That's why I said the country Greece. Corinth. Okay. You got to know where these territories at to get understanding when you're reading the Bible. Okay, let's go to the next verse. Acts chapter 19 verse 2. Um, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. So again, the disciples living in Greece or a Greek city called Ephesus or quote unquote in Turkey, they don't have no understanding. So this is why Paul was sent to these particular areas to edify the other disciples living in these areas. And this is the history that they're not getting to explain okay um this is the book of acts chapter 19 verse 3 and he said unto them unto what then were we i mean it's locked in acts chapter 19 verse 3 he said and he said unto them unto what then were ye baptized and they said unto john's baptism okay so now they're trying to figure out you know what how they was being baptized and then they say hey unto john's baptism now paul's gonna explain what john baptism was about because they're thinking all i have to do is just be dipped in water <laughs> you know what i'm saying just like the modern day christians of today they think oh i've been baptized already under john's ministry right but paul is going to get an understanding of what the baptism was really about this is the book of acts chapter 19 verse 4 then said paul John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Yahshua Hamashiach. So he's explaining to these disciples that's living in Turkey. So Paul is explaining that John's baptism has something to do with repentance, changing from the old man to becoming a new man in Christ, meaning keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. Okay. And we'll go to the next verse. When it says, when they heard, Acts chapter 19, verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. So when they heard the understanding, they was baptized. Acts chapter 19, verse 6. 
And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. You see, it is Israel. So now that we do have the understanding what tongues they were speaking in, it was not the jibber jabber language, it was the Hebraic tongue. And they prophesied. Okay, so they were speaking in Paleo Hebrew. Okay, and also they prophesied about this truth. Okay, the Holy Spirit, meaning the knowledge of the Most High, was revealed to them by the Apostle Paul. Okay, and keep on reading. And it says, Acts chapter 19, verse 7, and all the men were about 12. Okay, I'm gonna keep on reading. And then it says, I'm gonna go back up. It says, Acts chapter 19, verse 8. And he went into the synagogue. This is talking about Apostle Paul went into the synagogue. So again, you had synagogues in different places in Greece or in Turkey or places in Asia Minor. Okay, with our people living in these areas. Okay, and it says, and he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of the Most High Yah. So again, Apostle Paul had to explain this truth because the truth was not really been revealed to these particular individuals living in Greece, living in Asia Minor area, living in Turkey, living in these areas where the Gentiles of the other nations were living at because why? The truth was revealed into in, in Jerusalem where Christ was in, okay? So Apostle Paul had to go out to these areas and other disciples had to go to these areas to teach the truth, Okay? Um, and it says, Acts chapter 19, verse 9. It says, But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. So again, Apostle Paul had to dispute the truth to other Hebrews living in these areas because they didn't have the full understanding like he had. But let me go to the next uh, understanding, okay? This is the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 24. And you're going to get the understanding why I'm bringing the understanding, uh, the book of Acts with Apostle Paul and his, and his uh, ministry. Uh, you're going to get the understanding on this particular chapter, okay, why I'm bringing this out, okay? This is the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 24. It says, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith which made silver shrines for Diana brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. So like you remember this one more time. Acts chapter 19 verse 24. It says for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith which made a silver shrines for Diana brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. So again, you had a, a, a silversmith, Demetrius, making shrines catered towards a uh idol god named diana okay um this is acts chapter 19 verse 25 it says whom he called together with the worksmen of light occupation and said sirs you know that by this craft we have made our wealth so so this craftsman named uh demetrius he explained to paul and the other disciples that was with him saying hey i made my money making shrines catered towards diana you know, which is the idol God. And and he feels as though Apostle Paul and the disciples is messing up his business, teaching this Hebrew truth in uh, the city uh, uh, called Turkey, okay? Which is necessarily um, Ephesus, okay? Um, Acts chapter 19, verse 26. It says, Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but all, it said, but almost throughout all asia talking about asian minor which is european nations right uh this paul have persuaded and turned away much people saying that they be no gods which are made with hands so apostle paul was teaching the people that was in greece the people that was living in turkey people living in asia minor and other european countries he was teaching the truth to turn people stop worshiping these idol gods of this time okay because he, this particular guy named Demetrius is upset that Apostle Paul is messing up his business business because he's been making shrines and silver and all this, making plenty of money off our people. Okay? 
Acts chapter 19, verse 27. It says, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana shall be despised, and her magnificence shall be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. You see this, Israel? At this particular time, the world worship the goddess diana you see this israel they was worshiping the goddess diana at this time okay it was worshiping the goddess diana at this time okay and uh we got to get the history of Diana, the goddess diana uh let me see let me go to this one see we're gonna go to the goddess diana We're gonna get goddess Diana. But this is what the Roman Empire was um, worshiping at the time. Okay. Because uh, Rome was in power, even though uh, Apostle Paul was walking in Greece territory, but you gotta understand when another empire steps in place of one, the whole world is gonna recognize that, that God as the um, deity okay they're gonna leave off the gods that they were serving so the greeks had their god but once they was conquered they was following uh the roman god okay so we're gonna go to wikipedia to get the understanding of the roman god uh the roman goddess diana this is what our people is worshiping similar to today when our people are worshiping other gods but they put it on different names uh it says diana it said is a goddess in roman and hellenistic religion primarily considered a patroness of the countryside hunters crossroads and the moon she is equated with the greek goddess artemis so that's what other, these nations did they changed the name to different gods okay but they did similarities and absorbed much of artemis mythology early in roman history and then um then it said including a birth on the island of Delios to parents Jupiter and Latono and a twin brother Apollo though she had an independence origin in Italy it says Diana is considered a virgin goddess and protector of childbirth historically Diana made up a triad with two other Roman deities okay but all in all I wanted to show that this is where our people was worshiping it says Diana the goddess of the hunt wild animals fertility and the moon so basically a sky god basically uh but this is what this monument of some similarity that uh one of the brothers was making uh in in, in uh, turkey area in ephesus okay he was making silver shrines similar to like something like this in silver okay and apostle paul and the disciples was messing up his business by telling people that hey these are not real gods and he had to, he was arguing that hey everybody worship this god diana <laughs> everybody the whole world worship this god okay let me go to the next one acts chapter 19 verse 28 it says and when they heard these sayings they were full of wrath and cried out saying great is diana of the ephesians you see israel you see how manipulative our people can be now this guy that was a craftsman stirred up a crowd and he explained that the whole world is worshiping diana and what this guy apostle paul and his disciples teaching us is not right but paul was paul and the disciples was teaching truth but again he had to explain and manipulate so oh, see the whole world is worshiping diana and these guys come out of nowhere teaching us about diana is not a real god so what they're teaching cannot be the truth and this is how the persuasion to to cause diana to be screamed out okay because that's what it said acts chapter 19 verse 28 it said and when they heard these sayings they were full of wrath the people was full of wrath at paul and the disciples teaching them contrary to what the world is worshiping just like in christianity christianity worshiped white jesus right the world worship white jesus white jesus statues all over the place and now you have the hebrew israelites teaching our people no leave them idol gods alone the god of abraham isaac and jacob is black 
okay christ is a black man not a white man but the people of today our nation people gonna get upset full of wrath want to teach us that we're teaching hate we're teaching lies so it's the same argument just under a different uh god understanding because at this time they was vouching for the goddess diana okay just like right now our people are vouching for the white jesus okay and the real true prophets are telling our people no stop worshiping these idol gods okay let's go to the next one acts chapter 19 verse 29 it says and the whole city was filled with confusion and having caught gains and our artisterous men of macedonia paul's campaigns and travel they rushed with one accord into the theater so now the whole city was just confused hold up do we worship diana <laughs> or do we worship the god paul and his companions are teaching okay they was confused that's why i said this whole city was filled with confusion um acts chapter 13 uh acts chapter 19 verse 30 it said and when paul would have entered in unto the people the disciples suffered him not so he paul was trying to talk to the people inside this theater but the disciples said no nah, don't go in there they're gonna mess you up uh acts chapter 19 verse 31 and certain of the chief of asia which were his friends sent unto him desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater so paul wanted to confront these people inside the theater but his friends that were chief men meaning they had high ranking in asia minor hey they said don't do that okay these people are crazy they'll kill you uh acts chapter 19 verse 32 some some therefore cried one thing and some another for the assembly were confused i mean was confused and the more part knew not wherefore they will come together so again this whole assembly is just confused of what's going on what is this ruckus about who are these men telling us diana is, is an idol god and it's not real who these men think they are right that's the confusion uh acts chapter 19 verse 33 it says and they drew alexander out of the multitude and the jews putting him forward and alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people so now you have this jew named alexander so notice his name alexander alexander is not a hebrew name but again our people that were scattered abroad in these different countries primarily in greece or greek cities right or in turkey or asia minor they took the adoption of of these greekish names okay so listen to what's about to happen on the next verse acts chapter 19 verse 34 because alexander is now going to try to persuade the people but uh acts chapter 19 verse 34 it said but when they knew that he was a jew meaning now alexander they knew alexander was a israelite in the truth and not going to persuade um himself to be amongst the crowd meaning following worshiping diana this is what the people do did it said all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out great is diana the other ephesians so once the people found out hey this guy alexander is just he's in a hebrew israelite he's a jew in the truth he's not part of us meaning in the understanding of worshiping diana we don't want to listen to him no more we're going to say great is the diana of the ephesians great is the diana of the ephesians which is of course idolatry customs okay similar to the day if we argue father's day goes back to paganism it goes back to worshiping the sky gods our people gonna say no 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 we 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 celebrating the commemoration of our fathers it's gonna be a similar argument uh acts chapter 19 verse 35 and when they said and when the town clerk had appeased the people he said ye men of ephesus what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess diana and of the image which fell down from jupiter fell down from jupiter so i'm bringing this out to show the understanding that these are sky deities sky fathers or sky deities or sky gods that our people that was in these greek areas or european areas were worshiping okay and the apostles and the disciples was trying to teach the people stop worshiping these idol deities uh acts chapter 19 verse 36 it says seeing then that these things 
cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. So now this particular man is speaking some logical sense. He's trying to say, hey, if you if you think that these men are speaking blasphemy, you need to take it to the law, the law of the land. It's in Acts chapter 19, verse 37. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. So this particular man is saying, hey, these men ain't robbed nothing from your church. They didn't speak blasphemy to your goddesses or whatever like that. Um, let's keep going down. Acts chapter 19, verse 38. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open and there are uh, deputies. Uh, let them and plead one another. So this particular man is telling them, take it to the law, take it to the judges, take it to the judges of this land. OK, and we know Demetrius and the craftsmen. So who is Demetrius? Demetrius was, of course, that certain man that was a silversmith. That was making shrines it said uh for a certain man demetrius a silversmith which made silver shrines for diana okay he was the one making the shrines of this goddess named diana and he was the one that was causing the uproar in the town because he knew the apostles and also uh apostle paul was messing up his business telling people stop worshiping these gods throw them away get rid of these idol gods and it was affecting his business um Acts chapter 30 it said Acts chapter 19 verse 39 it said but if ye inquire anything concerning other matters it shall be determined in a lawful assembly so now this particular gentleman another gentleman out of nowhere say hey if you got any issues with Paul and the disciples take it to the law don't just cause an eruption in, in the neighborhood because we all can get in trouble because it was a particular law of about a uh, public disturbance okay um acts chapter 19 verse 40 see i'm proof that it was a law against public disturbance acts chapter 19 verse 40 it says for we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar you see this they was gonna he said we are in danger meaning it, we, we're breaking a law in this land okay to be called in question for this day's uproar there being no cause whereby we may give an answer or i mean give an account of this concourse so Meaning they had no real justification causing this public disturbance all because a group of men don't believe in Princess Diana, basically. Not Princess Diana, but um a god of the goddess of Diana. It was it Apostle Paul and the um the disciple was not breaking no laws of the land, okay? Uh by not being in agreement by worshiping uh the goddess Diana, basically. That's what he's saying. It said Acts chapter 19, verse 41. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. So everybody went their own several way. Because they realized, hold up, Apostle Paul and the disciples, they weren't breaking no laws. You know, everybody has a right to their opinion. Okay? So I brought this lesson out to show that the apostles, the disciples, had the same argument with our people living in these Gentile areas outside of Jerusalem. Okay, the same argument that the men of the Lord are doing today, trying to teach our people, stop worshiping these pagan holidays like Father's Day, Mother's Day. And I did videos on Kingdom Builders of Israel see YouTube page to show that these days go back to paganism. It goes back to worshiping these idol gods, these idol deities. Okay, it has nothing to do with your actual father. Okay. Uh, it has nothing to do with the Most High Yah anyway, you know, because he said, Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, thou shalt have no other gods before me, right? Then we read Exodus chapter 20, verse 12 again, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days, plural, more than one day, may be long upon the land which Yahweh the Elohim giveth thee. So you're supposed to honor your father and mother throughout your days of your life, not necessarily on one particular day. And we explain the history that those particular um, days is like our actual Father's Day. Go back to paganism, which go back to sacrificing goats. Okay, putting ribbons around the goat's neck. Now we're doing this now in today's time in general as a society by putting the, the tie around our father's neck to sacrifice our fathers to the idol sky gods. 
okay that's go back to ancient times of times of the greeks the romans and also prior before then okay with the other uh empires that rose up but in general it goes back to the greek and romans because we are under uh the so-called white man's rule and we know the so-called white man is the greeks and the romans okay they just changed the name to being like american or european or or um caucasian the same people they just changed the names okay so israel we have to re repent and i brought this lesson out so you can get the full history that that you're really worshiping idol gods it's like you're worshiping more than one god deity okay uh so you're not really honoring your father hopefully israel you was awakened to this truth i understand it was probably a long lesson but i had to break it down to show biblically at the time we was doing it and then now in today's time we we're still doing today but it's under a different understanding okay israel so repent forsake these pagan um holidays come back to the most high y'all by keeping his holy feast days that is found in the bible okay you can find it literally in the bible these holy days that's found in the bible not these holy so-called uh holy days as in the world which they're not holy at all so that's why they call them uh, holidays or stuff like that. But other than that, Israel, stay tuned for more classroom videos. Um, share this video with your family and friends and let them know that, hey, hey, mom and daddy, this ain't got nothing to do with you. It has something to do with these uh, false deities that the Romans and the Greeks was worshiping. Okay. Other than that, Israel, shalom.